That's win, baby. 5-1 to one over the Miami Marlins to win the three-game set over this opening day weekend. Or the four-game set, that is. Winning three out of four. And, yeah, what a great series here for the Mets. A way to wrap it up. I had some questions going into this game with the lineup. You're seeing Tommy Pham lead off. I'm wondering, what are we doing here? I thought maybe Starry Marte should have been in the leadoff spot. And then you have Tim LaCasher in the lineup, which we knew was happening because Buck Showalter was very clear about that going into this game. But I was definitely interested to see how it was going to play out without Brandon Nimmo in the lineup, especially, you know, seeing the lineup, who was going to hit leadoff. And sure enough, it was Tommy Pham. And you know what? Tommy Pham, we'll talk more about him later, but he had himself... A hell of a game for the Mets today. And the Mets themselves had a hell of a game. Kodai Senga making his MLB debut. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk all about this game. Before we do, remember to leave a like on the video. If you do enjoy, subscribe. If you guys are new, especially if you're Mets fans, we're going to cover them as much as possible throughout the season here. And turn on your notifications so you know when I upload a video or go live on the channel next. But let's talk about this game. First inning, like I said, Tommy Pham leads things off and he gets himself a single. So it was nice to see... Tommy Pham with a leadoff hit because I had questions. I thought maybe Marte should have been in the leadoff spot, get some speed on the bases early, but I digress. Marte then gets out, same with Lindor. Pete Alonso then with a walk. Mark Hanna then walks as well. And then Jeff McNeil gets himself a weird little single as Rogers just had an awful throw there, but they apparently said that either way he was going to be safe there, so they didn't charge it as an error there. So Jeff McNeil gets himself a single there, an infield single, and gets himself two RBIs there with driving in Alonzo and Pham. So 2 nothing game early. Escobar strikes out. Who's surprised? Not me. Bottom of the first starts, and Kodai Senga definitely had it rough here in the beginning as Luis Arias gets himself a single. Thank God this series is over and we don't have to deal with this guy for a while because Luis Arias killed the Mets this series killed and thankfully didn't kill him enough for it to hurt the Mets completely but still just was annoying and then saying it throws a wild pitch which advances a rise to second and then Jorge Soler hits himself an RBI double to drive in Arias and make it a two to one game he walks Jazz Chisholm that gets Jeremy Hefner out to the mound there uh, or actually that was after the Garcia walk that got him out and it's looking shaky what's happening here no outs here and we got the bases juiced what, what's going on and then what does he do bounces back like just I, I don't even know what I was gonna say there but he, he bounced back like a maniac and he gets back-to-back -back strikeouts that ghost pitch absolutely disgusting making Guriel swing out of his shoes making Sanchez swing out of his cleats and then he gets Birdie to line out and that ends the inning. Way to work out of the jam for Kodai Senga. Rough first inning for him. But you know what? He got out of the jam. And it was beautiful to watch. And then the Mets go down in order in the top of the second. Unfortunately, bottom of the second. Senga allows a leadoff walk. And then he uh, gets a line out from Joey Wendell. And then a double play from Arias. So Arias finally getting out there. Feels like he hasn't gotten out all series long. So... Bottom or top of the third, rather, the Mets go down in order. Bottom of the third, Sanga picks up a pair of strikeouts and gets the Marlins to go down in order. So Sanga really figured it out and really got everything under control there. And it's so refreshing to see a number three starter just be so calm, cool, and collected like Kodai Sanga. None of this Chris Bassett garbage because we watch what he did in St. Louis today. Oh, oh, oh I, I don't care. If anyone, I know some Met fans still like Chris Bassett and don't have anything against him, but some of his comments just kind of pissed me off when he was here. So I don't really have any feelings for Chris Bassett in a positive light. So, hey, if you're going to struggle, uh, it is what it is. And Kodai Senga, we'll take him as our number three starter here all day of the week as he's just calm, cool, collected, and he's a dog. And that's what he showed today. Top of the fourth inning, though. Mark Hanna gets himself a leadoff single, and then, unfortunately, the Mets go down the rest of the way in order. Bottom of the fourth, he ends up picking up a strikeout, that Kodai Senga, that is, and gets the Marlins down in order. Top of the fifth, a lot more action here as Tim Lecasher gets hit by a pitch. I didn't really expect much from Tim Lecasher with the bat, so you know what? 
We take a hit by pitch all day of the week here. And then Tommy Pham hits a bomb. Hits a bomb to center field. And that is a two-run home run for Tommy Pham to make it a 4-1 to game. Starling Marte then strikes out. Lindor gets hit by a pitch. A lot of hit by pitches by Rodgers today. He ends up being yanked out of the game after that. And then Pete Alonso grounds it to a double play. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning as Sanga picks up two strikeouts, allows a single though to Arias again, Arias being a pain. Wendell also got a fly out in between there. So the Mets don't allow anything there. Sanga, I should say, doesn't allow much there. Again, just, I, I love what we saw from him today, but we're going to talk more about it. Top of the six, Mets go down in order yet again. Bottom of the six. Kodai Senga picks up a strikeout on Jazz Chisholm, and that ended up being his day. I, I thought that was a good idea by Buck Showalter to go to the pen there. Don't go too crazy here. Don't get too cute trying to drive the pitch count up too much, trying to, you know, get a lot here out of Senga. Just pull him out of the game, and may, maybe later in the season, he could go deeper in a game, and you let him play out the inning there. But I like the decision to go to the bullpen. Dennis Santana comes in. And Dennis Santana, another filthy day at the office for him, picking up a pair of strikeouts there. He only faced two batters, but hey, we take it. Tomas Nito strikes out to lead off the seventh. And then Tim Wilcasher gets hit by pitch yet again. And Tommy Pham ends up getting a double on this one. And it is an RBI double to drive in Tim Wilcastro. So Mets go up 5-1. to one. Marte then with a ground out. Lindor then walks. And then Pete Alonso strikes out. We go to the bottom of the seventh. And John Curtis comes in the pitch for the Mets. Had a rough outing last time out. Let's see how he bounces back. And he bounced back great. Gets a ground out from Jesus Sanchez. Strikes out John Birdie. And ends up getting a ground out from Jacob Stallings. Eighth comes around. And Tanner Scott comes in the pitch for the Marlins. The Mets go down in order. Escobar striking out. Just thought I'd point that out. Because again... I'm watching Brett Beatty just kill it. Uh, I, the highlights are all over Twitter. Just watch him kill it in AAA. And you just got to shake your head and wonder why. And how long are we going to do this for? Buck Showalter already said that Escobar is not getting the start tomorrow at third base. So I don't know if that means Guillaume. I don't know what that means for tomorrow. Who's going to get the start? I'd imagine that means Guillaume. But... It's looking like the leash might be short here with Escobar, I at least hope. But at any rate, Steven Nagosik comes in the pitch a game. And you know, I'm going to be honest, I was sweating. I was sweating here because Steven Nagosik, I just do not trust. I know he had a good spring, but allows a walk to Wendell. Gets back-to-back -back outs, then walks Jazz Chisholm. That gets a mound visit there from Hefner. You're seeing Robertson, Ottavino warm up in the pen. And then he gets a strikeout to end the inning. Ninth inning comes along, and Barnes comes in the pitch for the Marlins, and he ends up getting Tomas Nito to line out. Brandon Nimmo comes in the pitch hit for Tim Lacasho. He flies out. Tommy Pham with a walk steals a base as well. So Tommy Pham getting some speed there on the bases too from the leadoff spot. Marte then grounds out, and then the ninth inning comes along, and Nagosik allows a single to Yuli Gurriel, then gets a big double play ball there. And then John Birdie grounds out. The Mets win the ball game 5-1. to one. And in terms of your final stats here, the Mets, of course, with five runs, the Marlins with one. Five hits for the Mets, four for the Marlins, one error for the Marlins, none for the Mets. Your winning pitcher is Kodai Senga. Your losing pitcher is Trevor Rogers. So Rogers, awful day at the office for him. Awful day at the office for him. When it comes to the lineup, I, I would have liked more than it just being the Tommy Pham show, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I would have liked to have seen more from the lineup, but Tommy Pham in that leadoff spot, round of applause for him having himself a day at the office. He ends up getting three hits on the day, three RBIs, a walk, a stolen base. Yeah, Tommy Pham was easily the best offensive player for the Mets today, and it's not even close. Very happy with what we got from Tommy Pham, and yeah. I I wonder if maybe he gets the gets the nod tomorrow in in the, the game, especially if Mark Hanna's. I mean, he ended up getting a hit too, Mark Hanna, but maybe maybe you want to switch things out. I don't know, but regardless, maybe Tommy Pham gets a crack at it again tomorrow after having a great day at the office today. Marte went over five, striking out twice. Yeah, Marte with definitely his worst game of the season thus far. 
but I'm not going to panic because he's had great games so far this season. So it is what it is. Lindor, I still want to see more from him. I want to see some hits here already. He got a walk. Didn't strike out today at least, but I need I need to see him get some hits. I need to see him get some hits. He went 0 for 2. I need more from Lindor. Alonzo, 0 for 3 on the day with a walk and a strikeout. Another guy you need more from. You need him to get some hits. It's just that simple. Mark Hanna get himself a hit going one for three. And he got a walk. An okay day for Mark Hanna. Jeff McNeil, same sort of deal. He ended up getting an RBI, getting him himself a hit as well. So an okay day there for Jeff McNeil, but you want more. Escobar cannot be playing for this team. He went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Yeah, uh, again, how long are we going to wait? How long are we going to wait here? And I'm going to rant about this every single video until Eduardo Escobar has a good game or until Brett Beatty's on the roster. I'm going to rant about this because it is infuriating to watch and we shouldn't have to be watching this disgusting baseball from Eduardo Escobar. We should be watching Brett Beatty. He earned the spot from this past uh, spring training and it's just frustrating that Billy Epler didn't give him the opening day start. But... I could go on a rant about that for a while, so I'll just wrap it up there. But Tomas Nito went 0 for 4, struck out once. Not a good day for Tomas Nito, and we're still waiting for him to crack a hit. Lacastro going 0 for 1, getting hit by a pitch twice. Eh, I mean, I can't hate him because hate on the guy because you get hit by a pitch twice, you don't really get an opportunity to get a couple hits there, so... I'll give LaCastro a pass, even though, again, I'm not expecting much from him. And then Nimmo and his pitch hitting assignment went 0 for 1. So, yeah. Three out of your five hits go to Tommy Pham, and the other two went to Canna and McNeil. You need more. You need more from this offense. I'm sorry. You just do. And the Marlins pitching today was just not stellar. So, you needed to capitalize on that, and you need to take advantage of that. That's just my opinion, but... Regardless, I again, I, I'm a jerk off. I can admit it, and I'm just hard on this team. But it's because I know that they could give more. I know that they could give more. And they went one for five with runners in scoring position, left six on. So not a lot of opportunities for timely hits today. But again, I know they're capable of more. It's just that simple. Pitching, very happy with the pitching for the most part today. Kodai Sanga had a great day outside that first inning. And even then, him getting out of the jam was very impressive in that first inning. Him giving you five and a third, allowing three hits, one earned run, three walks, and getting eight strikeouts. Very happy. The ghost pitch, yeah, it's here, and it's going to be here for a while, and it's going to be disgusting to watch every time he goes out there. Hopefully, it takes a while for hitters to figure that one out because, man, it was fun to watch. It was fun to watch that pitch. And then Dennis Santana picking up a pair of strikeouts, only facing two batters. Yeah. Happy with what we've seen from Santana so far. Not going to complain. Curtis, a lot better. Picking up a strikeout. Getting a 1-2-3 inning. Solid day at the office for Curtis. And then the Gosick. He got into some trouble at times, but still wasn't necessarily the worst. Picking up a strikeout. And he allowed two walks, one hit. So, yeah. And totally get 12 strikeouts from your pitchers. Allowed five walks total. Two of them from the Gosick. Three from Senga. And then, of course the one earned run to Kodai Senga. So, yeah, back at it again tomorrow in Milwaukee. We got, who's on the bump tomorrow? Why am I uh blanking with who's on the bump? Carrasco, right. Carrasco's on the bump tomorrow. So, against Peralta, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes, but yeah. Uh, definitely a great opening series. Let's see if they can build on it. Let's see if the offense could get going a bit more heading into this next series. That's one thing that I really want to keep an eye out for here against the Brewers. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. If you did enjoy, remember to leave a like. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications so you know when I upload a video or go live next. And I will see you guys in the next one. Let's go Mets.